about 31, welcome to the last example in this chapter. We're going to build a logistic model from data. So the table below shows the population in thousands of harbor seals in the Wadden Sea over the years 97 to 2012. All right, so I've got a bunch of year information here and then the population of the seals. So this is let X represent time in years starting at X equaling zero for the year 1997. Let Y represent the number of seals in thousands. Use logistic regression to fit a model to these data. So it's got logistic in there, all right? And, and I've got X equaling zero being year 1997. So this is year one, two, three, four, and we can finish this out. And the reason you're allowed to use year zero here is because again, logistic growth is initially exponential and then it flattens out. All right, and we're allowed to take the exponential or we're allowed to have an exponent of zero. That's possible. But back in example two, when we were dealing with logarithms, you're not allowed to take the log of zero. So that's why we had that weird base here in the last example. It's with logs that you have one of your domain issues, so you gotta worry about stuff. So in L1, I need to put the number zero to 15. That actually represents 16 years. And in L2, I'm gonna put all of my seal populations. So pause the tape for a moment and, and put that data in. I already did, so I put my data into L1 and L2, all right? and I'm not doing L1, L2, and then L3, L4. You only have two variables. You have time and the seal population. But if I make a scatter plot, this does look logistic, right? It's growing at first, and then you can see it capping off, right? It's got some kind of carrying capacity. And even if you didn't notice the graph, it doesn't really matter because the directions say use logistic regression. So I'm gonna flip over to my calculator. All right, I'm gonna show you how to run logistic regression, and then we're gonna, we're gonna solve the rest of this problem. All right, I'll see you in just a bit, bye. Hey Math 31, we're back for one last example in chapter six, or in specifically section 6.8. So now I wanna show you how to run logistic regression on your calculator. So I already put all of my data into my lists. If you're there, great. If not, just pause the video and catch up. So let's go back to our home screen. We're gonna hit stat. We're gonna go to calc. And logistic growth is so far down, it's actually in the letters. And it's so far down, I'm gonna scroll up to the top here. And it's option B. And if you wanted to get to option B without scrolling, you could hit the green key alpha and then this apps button because you see the, the letter B in green there. So that's two buttons to click. I almost think it's easier just to hit the up button three times. So I'm gonna do logistic growth. I'm gonna go L1, comma, L2. We'll drop it into Y1. And logistic growth is so convoluted, you can see that even your calculator is struggling, right? So it's spending a, a little chunk of time trying to run that logistic regression, and then it will pop out that, that output screen. So just, just be patient, give it about 10, 15 seconds, because these are so convoluted. Even your calculator is like running, it's, its little brain is running really, really fast. Okay, so there is our logistic model. There's our C, our carrying capacity our A value and our B value. So with that, I'm gonna pop back over to the handwritten answers and we're gonna finish this problem out. All right, I'll see you in a few, bye. All right, so we saw how to make a logist or how to get a logistic model on our calculator. Now, in going from this calculator's output screen to your midterm answer, I just want you to put all of this together. So you would have C on your numerator. So this would be, I'll go three decimals, 25.657. All right, and then you can see on the denominator you would have one plus a, a in this case will go 6.114 times e to the negative, let me extend this, negative bx, b will go 0.385x. All right, so that's what your logistic model would be. Okay, great. And now let me scooch this up so we can answer the rest of the questions here. All right, I think if I had that far up, we can see a good part of the rest of this paper. Okay, use the model to predict the seal population for the year 2020. Okay, if we're talking about 2020 and my base year was 1997, 
Let's see what our x value is. It's going to be 2020 minus 1997. All right, let me head over here. 2020 minus 1997. And we're looking at about 23 years. So what I'm trying to find here is the population, what is the y value, the population value, 23 years after we started tracking data. So what is y when x is equal to 23? Let me put a little separator. This will be 25.657 over 1 plus 6.114 times e to the negative 0.385 times 23. Now, the, the fun part of this is trying to get this into your calculator the correct way. I personally, I'm just gonna do the denominator first, and then I'll take the numerator and divide it by that denominator. So if I do 25, oops, let me do the denominator first. We'll go one plus 6.114 times e to the negative 0.385 times 23. If I hit enter, that's my denominator. So I'm going to take 25.657 and I will divide it by that answer. And I'm looking at about 25.635. All right, now keep in mind this was in thousands. So this means that in the year 2020, I'm going to have about 25,635,000 ,000 seals. Because if I were to multiply that number by 1,000, that's what I would get, 25,634 seals-ish, maybe 635, but pretty close to it. Okay, so this is all fine and good. I, I find it a little cumbersome to plug that into my calculator and then have to do the denominator first and then numerator divided by denominator. So I, I tend to actually want to try doing it um, on my calculator's graph screen. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn my model back on. I'm gonna hit zoom nine, and I wanna plug in the number 23. But I realize that my data really only goes to um, the year 15, so I'm just gonna preemptively adjust my window. I'll go out to 30 here, and let me hit graph. All right, and I'll be able to see a good chunk of it. And there it's coming, that's a pretty good fit, all right. So let's see, if I hit second trace, option one, I plug in 23, I'm gonna get 25.634, which is pretty close actually to what I got when I did it not using my graphing calculator screen. All right, this, this answer here is technically more precise. All right, but okay, oops, that looks like it's been scooted off the page. Let me actually adjust this, I apologize, I should have framed my work a little better. There we go. Um, so this one's a little bit more precise. I got close here. Now, when I was using, when I was screenshotting this, I only went two decimal place accurate. You can see I did 25.66, 6.11, and then I did negative 0.39, right? So I went two decimal accurate for all my constants, and you can see I was off by a little bit more. It's not that terrible, right? This was giving me 25,640 seals, where here I got 25,635 seals, and here I would have gotten 25,634 seals. So it's all pretty close. All right, oops, let me move that up so you can see the 25,000 part, excuse me. I am on fire with framing these today. All right, so we had 25,640, 25,634, 25,635. All of these are great answers. All right, and they're all pretty close. I mean, we're talking about thousands of seals. So I have like a little margin of error here of about six seals. Okay, that's still, I, I'm expecting a good chunk of seals in the year 2020. All right, and the last question here, it says to the nearest whole number, what is the limiting value of this model? Well, the limiting value of this model is always your C value. It's always your carrying capacity. So the limiting value or the carrying capacity in this particular example is 25.657. Well, that doesn't quite look like the word is. Let me re rewrite that, is 25.657. Or if you wanted to frame it a different way, you would say that was 25,657 seals. All right. 
So in this section, we've taken a look at how to build all sorts of models. Well, not all sorts, really limited to three, but we, we've done exponential regression, logarithmic regression, and logistic regression. All right, so that ends chapter six, which is between chapters five and six, those are the hugest chapters in Math 31. So congrats, you've made it through the heart of this class, and then we're just gonna pick up a few more topics, and you are close to being done, gang. All right, I'll see you in chapter seven. Take care, bye.